Welcome to the Invest Talk classroom. We're excited to bring a bunch of lessons to you uh, on our new set. So I hope you enjoy. And today we're going to talk about pitfalls and best practices of investing. And, you know, throughout the year, Steve, we have we have fielded thousands of calls. And so we know a lot of the mistakes that people make. They're, they're very common. Uh, they're, they're, they're ones that the average investor uh, consistently makes time after time. And I think the most common one is definitely chasing returns, right? I was just going to suggest. Just going that. after that hot sector. They always you get calls every day after the stock has already run up 100%. Mm-hmm. Then that person wants to buy it. Yeah. They don't, the, the a- average amateur doesn't understand by the time they hear about something, it's usually too late. Yeah. And usually the hot sectors of the past three, six, 12 months are usually not the hot sectors in the next, the next three, three yeah. six. Yeah. It happens a lot. You know, um, it, technology in 2021 was, was amazing. Right. Yeah. But it did terrible in 2022. Well, your, your grandfather taught me from the very get go. Don't invest looking at the rear view mirror. Always look through the windshield. In other mm-hmm. words, always look forward, not backward. Yeah. And I think that's a major pitfall for most amateur investors. Yeah, and and it's one of those things where they're watching CNBC. And remember, CNBC, they only care about what you pay attention to. They right. don't care whether you make money or not. They no. just care whether you're tuning in. And, and guess what? It's it's much more exciting to talk about the sector that was up 20% over the last quarter versus right. the one that was flat, right? Yeah. Where uh, the odds are, are fairly good that the one that uh, was flat the last quarter probably outperformed that one was up 20%. Yeah, right? why would you... Why would you what makes you think that the TV audience or whoever is trying to, they're trying to get you as a viewer. They're not trying to give you advice on what you should do. Because yeah, they want to sell ads. They want to sell their ads. They want to sell ratings. Yeah. So don't listen to them. Do your own research. You're going to be a lot better off if you do your own research. Now, the question is, do you have the time and the ability to do your own research? Yeah. And that kind of feeds into the next pitfall, and that would be falling for too good to be true sales pitches, right? And you have a lot of family members that are oh, in yeah. this bucket, right? They chase the the big story and the big kind of avant-garde uh, trade or, or, or asset purchase to try to make the big bucks, right? To yeah. hit the grand slam. Yeah. And how often does that really work out? No, it rarely works out. I got relatives that always are looking for that you know pie in the sky thing and they continually do it mm-hmm. i got one that just just did didn't tell me about it two or three months ago what he did and and i just shake my head i he's my age and he can't learn you have to understand this is investing this is not gambling yeah this is a managing a portfolio of stocks, not just buying a stock and think you're going to get a 10,000% return. Mm-hmm. It takes effort and time and knowledge. But don't ever chase the blue sky. You can't. It doesn't work. It just does not work. Yeah, and that kind of feeds into the next one, which is chasing yield, right? A lot of people, they're just going after they see uh, that one yield on the screen, right? That whether it's a dividend yield or a yield on a bond or some sort of fund and it's yielding 10, 12, 15%. And that's the only criteria that they need to make that purchase, right? Yeah. Have you noticed uh, on the calls that, that we're getting, Justin, that they don't really understand yields and bond values and what moves the value of a bond or down, up or down, or even the yield on a on a stock, which mm-hmm. is a dividend. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that they're looking backwards, not forwards, and they don't understand how, how do you get a 5% yield? Well, if a stock doubles, it's no longer a 5% yield. They don't, I find that a lot of people don't understand how these things work. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn, you have to have the understanding before you should be investing. Yeah, and that's really what it's about. It's about uh, understanding where that yield is coming from, right? Is it sustainable or not? Uh, is remember dividends can be cut, right? Companies can default on their debt. Uh, funds can go under. 
right? So it's really about the underlying investment, not that big yield on the screen or what's promised to them in some sort of pitch book. That happens a lot with uh, right universal life policies and yep. things like that. That yeah. they, they 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 buy something based on the the top level marketing gimmick around it um, versus they're being sold. Yeah, yeah they're ex- sold a product instead exactly. of a buying a product that they understand yeah. they're being a sold a product that a salesman tells them and they're not balancing the pros and cons right every investment has its upside and its downside and unless you have your eyes wide open to both then you're probably going to uh, get burned now another uh, common mistake is really being over or under uh, exposed to uh, or, or over or under diversified, excuse me, right? Where you have, I remember Qualcomm, remember uh, early uh, in the uh, dot com days, this is early in my career, where we had uh, we had secretaries that were from San Diego, lived in San Diego, worked for Qualcomm, were millionaires. And they yes. came in and they, uh, and you were telling him, my grandfather was telling him to diversify, diversify right? Diversify away from that. I mean, every multi millionaire, Steve, uh, um, uh, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Everybody who has millions and billions of dollars, they're tempting to diversify away all the time, diversify the portfolio. And those Qualcomm secretaries, Mm -hmm. we would tell them you need to sell back, cut it by 80, 90%, put it elsewhere, buy, pay cash for your house. Because 90 to 80%, 90 to 100% of their their uh, well, retirement fund yeah. was in Qualcomm, in Qualcomm stock. stock. Yeah. And it's a great company. A great stock had nothing to do with that, mm-hmm. but none of them would do it. They thought we were crazy t- trying to get them to get out of their stock. Well, it wasn't that we wanted out of Qualcomm. We just wanted a more balanced, diversified portfolio. Yeah. And that takes a little work and you got to rebalance it every year. You have to look at that balance and make sure that that balance is what you want and meets your criteria of the goals that you've set for that portfolio. Exactly. And and at risk tolerance level, when you're concentrating in one name, especially, you know, a lot of people have tech exposure because they work for a tech computer. company. Well, yeah. Everybody well, has that. They're, they're obviously uh, pretty high risk. But the corollary to being too concentrated in one particular name is having too many positions. And we see this all the time when we do portfolio reviews. People send in their portfolio, they have 80, 90, 150 different positions, right? And the mainly that it relates to another pitfall, which is not having a plan. And that's, that's why right. they get to this point where they have so many positions, they're not really keeping track of it. Uh, they heard it from their cousin, they heard it on, on uh, they read it on uh, in a magazine, or they saw it on TV, or whatever. They, f- they come up with these ideas, they find these ideas, they buy a little bit here, a little bit there, and there's just not really a plan. And so you have too many positions and you're over diversified. Yeah, we have a basic philosophy. Uh, that is, we don't want to have too much in any one stock and usually three to 5% is a purchase, three to 5% of a portfolio to enter a stock. Sometimes it could be two, but that's generally where we are. Then we also want a diversified sectors as well, not just tech sector or or energy sector. No, we diversify over sectors too. And usually we say no more than 15, 20% in any one sector. I mean, you could go over a little bit, you can go under a little bit, but you're managing a portfolio of stocks, not just buying a stock or two stocks. You're managing a portfolio so you can diversify the risks that you're taking over a broader scope. And that you'll be a lot more successful as an investor if you do that. Now, what Steve's talking about really is having a plan. That's what you yes. kind of laid out there is having a plan. And that, can, that, that plan should adjust over time. But it, that plan will help you weed out the emotions, right? If you can fall back on that plan, on that structure, then when the times are tough, you don't sell out right no. at the worst time. No. We see that a lot, right? When so sentiment, right at the bottom, yeah, the sentiment gets really bad. Everything looks the the most dire. Frankly, that's typically the best time to be buying. Yeah, but, but investors are, are not that way, right? They tend yeah. to sell at those times. They let emotions control their decisions, mm-hmm. and really, there's only two emotions that really uh, that will get a hold of you. And sometimes you can't recognize them, but mm-hmm. it's fear and greed. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two emotions. That really matter. Mm-hmm. How do you control fear and greed? How do you recognize 
that fear and greed is making your decisions for you. Sometimes it's very difficult to do. Yeah. And and the the greed part goes back to our first pitfall, which is chasing returns. That's, that's where right. the greed comes in. When things are, are not so great, that's where the fear comes in. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have understand your risk tolerance level, understand what you're investing in and know that, you know, just because it didn't have a level, a certain level of volatility over the last six months or year doesn't mean that it can't, you know. So you have to look at what type of uh, company it is and, and the history of the volatility of that particular asset. Yeah. And right. back to your idea about a plan, you know, plans do change, but you need to, you know, some of, some of, much of it is based on your age or how, when you're going to retire and what you want out of your retirement accounts. So your plan has to match it. So it's always individual. You can't just say, well, this is a plan for everybody. Mm -hmm. No, it does not work that way. Yeah. It's individual to you. So you got to have a plan. You got to have proper diversification and you have to have proper monitoring of that portfolio to make sure it's in line with the plan you've established. Yeah. And so those are a lot of the pitfalls. So what are the best practices? Well, the first is have about 25 to 40 different names, right? Less Come than 25, name. you're probably not diversified enough. More than 40, you probably have too many names. Probably. So probably in that range is definitely good. Like you said, not getting over con concentrated in one particular sector, right? A lot of people, they get excited about a certain sector because they work in it, right? I see that a lot in technology. Yeah. They work for a chip company. So they understand all the different companies within the tech sector, uh, but they 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 that's all they know. And so that's all they invest in, right? Um, and I think another best practice would be focusing on the business performance that goes back to right chasing uh yield mm -hmm. and understand when you understand where that yield is coming from and it, which is a strong consistent business uh then you're more likely to find companies that are going to sustain that yield as opposed to where it might uh, disappear and the dividend might get cut. and that goes that goes back to fear and greed if you mm -hmm. understand the company you're investing in and you know that it's going to make money even though the stock has really fallen flat but if you understand the company and its fundamentals and how it could not how it could continue to grow then the fear won't be so you know so impactful on you you can work through that fear saying no i know this is a good company mm -hmm. i can stick with it exactly yeah and and that goes back to having the plan, understanding your uh, time horizon of your mm -hmm. uh, investments, right? So uh, that's another kind of mismatch that most investors make, which is uh, they have money today, they're going to use it in two years and they go invest in the stock market, right? Yeah, and that's and that, not wise. And that's not wise either. But uh, the corollary is, you're, you have retirement accounts, you're not re retiring for 20, 30 years, but you're too conservative, right? You're putting in cash or money market accounts and obviously long-term that's gonna perform. So really aligning your uh, investment time horizon with your uh, your goals, uh, and your portfolio is is vital to to success, so that you're you're uh, achieving uh, those goals over the long term. And the thing I like about our our show mm -hmm. is that it is a learning show. We yeah. teach you these things over time, uh, and we want we have no problem sharing all the information to know how to manage a portfolio. Mm -hmm. It takes work and it takes time. Mm -hmm. But you can do it. Yeah, it's not impossible. And you have to determine your your investment style. You know, we're value investors, but mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's not uh, the type of investor that that you want to be. Maybe it is more focused on those exciting growth your names. But you you still, even if you want to go down that route, you still have to uh, understand the risk that you're taking and construct a portfolio that is well balanced. When uh, when you you're know. saying understanding the risk, you're telling talk you're talking to volatility. Volatility, exactly. Because if you are this person who likes to take a lot of risk you have to understand that that stock was shoot up and it will go shoot right back down mm -hmm. that's volatility is that the risk that you're comfortable with again that goes to well how old are you how close are you to your retirement how stable of a uh, income do you want in retirement those things are all very important to consider and then back circling all the way back to having a plan thank you for tuning in you can find more of this content daily wherever you find your podcasts. Just search Invest Talk.